Huge fan of this man's work and uh, thrilled and honored that he's calling into the Rich Eisen Show right now in advance of Memory, which is going to be available in theaters on Friday, April 29th. He is Liam Neeson. How are you, sir? I'm very good. I'm very good. Thank you. So thanks for thanks for being on this program. So uh, let's just jump right into it. What what uh, what uh, appealed to you when uh, you said yes for doing Memory, which is a, a fascinating story about uh, an assassin who's losing his uh, memory back here. Marbles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I was, yes, that's one way to put it as well. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's, that's exactly it. I mean, it's a, it's a genre that we all know very well. You know, an assassin, a hitman out to get bad guys or what have you. Um, but this man who's legendary within his profession um, is suffering from early onset Alzheimer's and um, so there's a kind of a race against the clock because he knows he's facing the end of his days and uh, he and the FBI uncover a, a child prostitution uh, sex trafficking ring uh, and for him that's that's a red line you never cross and uh, so he sets about in his own way to, to find out who's who's the leader, who's 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 really in charge of all this, and it, and it leads to people in high positions in El Paso, Texas, uh, and all the time he's 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 uh, carrying out his own personal form of justice and letting the FBI know they're dragging their heels, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of essentially it. But he knows. You know, he's done some bad, nasty things throughout his professional life. Um, And he, you know, as I say, he's facing the end of his days. He he wants to make uh, a a huge wrong right. And Uh, by by way of a redemption, I guess. Sure. And so you read a script like this and you you get a sense of you know how you're going to play it. Um, how, How do you how does something like that work? For you, Liam Neeson. It's 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 a it's a general you know. I, it's not that I know how to play it. It's just it's certainly it, it with this particular script. It, it touched just something in me. I mean, we all know. Let's let's face it, Chris. If not in our immediate family and our, fram, our family's friends, we all know people who are suffering from dementia, Alzheimer's. It's a horrible, horrible affliction. Uh, I I have a personal friend back home in Ireland who's going through uh, the early stages of dementia, and it's 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 sad. He he still recognizes me just about, but we're sitting in his living room, and he doesn't recognize his own living room, and and it's uh, it's traumatic. And I I must say guiltily, I must say the actor part of my brain is going as really observing him watching how he lifts a cup of coffee or how he looks around the room and stuff and i i I think i want to steal a couple of his little mannerisms and and try and put them in this film you know so that i get it right and that i don't overact you know um, people who are suffering from alzheimer's or you know i didn't want to do a definitely not a big showboat thing of all, all the research I've done, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I worked very closely with Martin Campbell, who's the um, our director, and a, and a wonderful action director he is. Um, and uh, I, so, so I would present him with things I had noticed from documentary films I'd watched on Alzheimer's or dementia, uh, some books I'd read, and said, look, Martin, I want to be able to introduce this physical characteristic. Would you keep your eye on it, make sure I don't go overboard. And, and that's what we did throughout the film. You know, he would sometimes say, look, Liam, I see what you're doing there, but just pull that back by 50% or or do a little bit more of this, you know, uh, these physical characteristics. I just wanted to get it right and do it right and, and pay some kind of a homage to to my friend and also to the the, the people who are suffering this horrible affliction. You know? Memory is in theaters next week on Friday, April 29th. I have Liam Neeson, who, along with Guy Pierce, Monica Bellucci, and more, starring in Memory. 
right here on the Rich Eisen Show. So uh, who was your actor or actress growing up where that might have made you think, I want to be an actor, Liam Neeson? Who was that you know, person? that's a good question, Rich. I, um, um, I have to say Alan Arkin. Really? I remember seeing a film in my local cinema when I was a teenager called uh, the Alan starred in called Puppy, P-O-P-I. Okay. Uh, where he was a, a, a Cuban and he was trying to get his son, as far as I remember, get his son to Miami to give him a better life. Um, and it was it was both f- funny and very, very touching. That that, that film and Alan's uh, performance, I thought, was uh, just really, really got me, got me you know. Uh, there, there's been many actors since, and I've had the pleasure of working with some of them, certainly. Meryl Streep is a pal of mine, and, and Bob De Niro, Robert, is a pal, and, you know, they're, they're, they're extraordinary, extraordinary actors, and so I, I've, I've been very, very lucky. But, but that, that particular performance of Alan's, uh, and I've, I've never met Alan Arkin before, I'd love to, but, but that particular performance in that particular film really, really affected me in a, in a kind of profound way, you know? Yeah, sure. That was going to be my next question, if you've ever been able to tell him that. I mean, what a career he's had from Catch-22 to, uh, uh, honestly, one of my favorite comedies of all time is The In-Laws, him and Peter Falk. I mean, it was one of the oh, funniest fantastic. movies. <laughs> and have you seen him in the, uh, the, the, the wonderful show he does? Uh, With Michael Douglas? Uh, yeah, but McKins- no, the, McKinsey. Yeah, the Kaminsky uh, Method. He's been he's Kaminsky f- Method. Thank amazing. You. I absolutely loved him in that. Yeah. Two of them. <laughs> we're bouncing off each other. Exactly. So, uh, what? What? Com- I mean, uh, com- you know, I've seen stuff that you've done comedically. Um, is there? Is there uh, any favorite comedy of all time that you you enjoy? Like, what's your favorite comedy to go to that you've watched? I'm Lee listen. Nelson? I'm 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 an old timer. I have to say, certainly from being a child, going to matinees back home was definitely Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. Wow. Uh, but Abbott and Lucas Stella, of course, but 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 Stan and Laurel were were or Stan and Ollie were were just just truly my favorites. No kidding. And, and moving along, I you know I have to say films like Airplane and the Naked Gun series were very very funny. Do you go and Lieutenant Frank Drebin on me right now, Liam Neeson? That's pretty cool. I'll take that. Those are some great. I, I mean, those are the all-time greats. Then, of course, you know, uh, at the end of uh, the Naked Gun with the the baseball scene, uh, is 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 <laughs> outstanding. Did you? Are you a sports yeah. fan in any way, shape, or form, Liam Neeson? Do you ever? I, you, you know, I, I I'm a boxing fan because I used to be an amateur boxer years and years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, my one of my sons is a huge ice hockey fan, namely a range. New York Rangers fans. So, mm-hmm. so we've we've been to quite a few games over the years, you know. I still can't figure out the rules. He has to always tell me, but but I enjoy the the, the atmosphere, especially in Madison Square Garden. It's just phenomenal, you know. Yes, yeah, sure. So so if if hockey's rules are a bit uh, you know troublesome, I imagine the NFL, the National Football League, is something that. Uh, have you ever been to an NFL game? You ever been to one of those? I, I have, and I'll tell you. I, to me, I, seriously, it's. I, I, I'm okay, and I'll get killed for this. It's okay, I'd go sooner for watch paint dry on a wall. <laughs> oh, God. I just do not get it, and, um, and I've tried. I've really, really tried, but it's just. And, and I feel the same about baseball too. I know it's a, an American, a Canadian, sure. you know, institution. Yeah. I just do not get it. <laughs> so, so what about the the football that the rest of the world calls football? Or you, you, oh, uh, soccer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would, you know, I'd follow Liverpool uh, football club, and mm-hmm. I would, you know, with my two boys, I, I'd, I'd watch a few Liverpool games. Mm-hmm. I'm not a huge fan of soccer. When it comes to the World Cup, yeah, I would definitely watch it. You know. Sure. Uh, especially the semifinals and the finals. Well, it's but, coming up uh, right around the corner, the latest World Cup. It sure is. I can't believe it's not right. four years have passed. Yeah. It has. Liam Neeson here on the Rich Eisen Show. We've got a couple of uh, items from your filmography and your career uh, that we've noticed um, on you know line on the Internet, and we figured we could play a game called Celebrity True or False. You tell me if this is true or, or not, if you don't mind, okay. Liam Neeson, if you're from your... Your history. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have some uh, we have some production value to go to it that we're very proud of here on the Rich Eisen Show. Go for it. Celebrity true or false? 
celebrity, true or false? You can't handle the truth. All right, that's Jack Nicholson. I'm sure you noticed that voice right there at the yes. end. There. Okay, here we go, Liam Neeson. True or false? You drove a forklift for the Guinness Beer Company once upon a time after dropping out of college. Is that true or false? Yes, that's true. Yeah, one of the best jobs I ever had. Why? <laughs> Why? Because are you saying you sampled some of the product? Is that what you're saying, Liam? Uh, yes, occasionally on because we we'd wrap on a Friday around about one o'clock. Mm-hmm. And occasionally, we'd, we'd, the management would give us a bottle of Guinness, you know. <laughs> that, that was it. Um, but yeah. I loved that job. I loved being a forklift truck driver. Yeah, I did it for over a year. Oh, wow. No kidding. All right, so that is true. Uh, next one, true or false, you appeared on Miami Vice in the 1980s. Is that true, Liam Neeson? Yes, I did. I did uh, a pilot episode. It might have been for season three. Okay. Um uh, in 1985, 86, I think it was 1986. Well, who'd you play? Yeah. Who'd you play in that one? I played a playboy Irish terrorist. <laughs> the, one the, the female cops uh, that was beautifully played by Sandra Santiago. She falls in love with me. Of course. But I'm, I'm there to commit some devious deeds. And, and Don Johnson ends up shooting me at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still get a residual check for that in the mail every now and then? I don't think so, but but they gave me, they, you know, they, the show was known for its dress, its, yes. its style, its mm-hmm. music and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wore some really, really cool, I think it was Giorgio Armani stuff, you know. <laughs> and you get to you get to keep it? You get to walk away? I'll serve. I got to keep a jacket. I know they gave me a jacket. Okay. Yeah. Okay. At least it wasn't, I guess, then a bloody murder of you uh, by Don Johnson <laughs> <laughs> to keep the jacket. A couple more items here. Liam Neeson, celebrity, true or false on the Rich Eisen Show. True or false, you lost the role of Fezzik in The Princess Bride to Andre the Giant because Rob Reiner thought you were too short at six foot four. Is that true or false? That's very true, yeah. I had a meeting with Rob. Uh, and if I ever meet him, I'll give him a little dressing down because I walked into the room Mm -hmm. and he turned to his casting director and said, come on, come on, what height are you? He said to me. I said, I'm six foot four. Come on, he's he's just a normal-sized American, for God's sake. (laughs) I need a giant. He never even said, hello, goodbye, thank you very much. (laughs) I thought he was awfully rude. And I think he's incredibly talented. (laughs) He's wrong. But I think if I ever run into Rob, I have to say, excuse me, Rob, I want to bring you back to 19, whenever it was, 80-something, you know. You were you were quite rude to your casting director, and you were quite rude to me. However, it was a wonderful <laughs> film, and he did indeed cast it perfectly with Andre the Giant. Well, I guess if you're, if you're told you're too short at six foot four, it's helpful that Andre the Giant was the one who beat you out, right, Liam Neeson? I would yeah, assume. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Makes you feel a little bit better. Okay, a true or false, you turned down playing James Bond in GoldenEye. Is that true or false, Liam Neeson? Uh, that is false. Um, okay. They, they, they were interested in me after Schindler's List, um, but I, I know they were also interested in, in three or four other actors. So, no, I was not offered it. Okay. It was... They they send out feelers. They they wanted to see if I was interested in it. You would know. would you be would you ever have been interested in playing James Bond? I mm-hmm. you know something I I remember I was going around the room going ding 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 ding, ding, ding <laughs> like appearing in front of a mirror and putting my hands up in a gun position, <laughs> thinking wow. And I remember my my dear departed wife said to me mm. we were shooting a film in uh, North Carolina called Nell. Yes, of course. And she looked me straight in the face and she said, Liam, if you are offered this and if you do it, you know we can't get married. <laughs> wow. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> and that was all she wrote for James Bond, 007. Yeah. Oh. So anytime we had little arguments, I'd always go, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Last one for you, Liam Neeson. True or false here on The Rich Eisen Show. You, you thought you were a little bit, um, I, I guess, wavering on the movie Taken, but signed on to spend four months in Paris and take on the kind of role you hadn't really been offered in the past. Is that true or false? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did. Uh, my agent sent me the script. I thought, oh, I'd love to do this. Uh, and I... I my wife actually was 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 
showing a film she was in with Ray Fiennes at the Shanghai Film Festival. And mm -hmm. I found out that, that Luc Besson, who was the co-creator of the Tekken franchise, uh, certainly of the first Tekken film uh, script, he uh, I knew he was head of the jury in Shanghai. So I, I accompanied my wife, and, and I had met Luke a couple of times over the years, but I pulled him aside and I said, listen, look, I've read this script. I'd really love to do it. I'm sure I'm not on your short list. I'm sure I'm not even on your long list, but I'd love to do it. I used to, I was an amateur boxer. I've done some fight scenes and movies with swords and shields and all that sort of stuff, but I'd, I'd love to get the chance to do this. So anyway, push came to shelf and, and they, they offered it to me and I was thrilled, you know. Do you have people that just come up to you on the street and, and hand you a phone and ask you to call somebody and threaten them on the phone in your taken voice? Does that ever happen to you? That's happened music? a couple of times, but when the phone first came out, if I had five cents for every time my sons asked me to leave a message for their friends, <laughs> I'd be quite a rich man, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Were you just tell them you're going to find them, right? I mean, that's pretty much the way it goes, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Oh, my gosh. Liam, uh, greatly appreciate uh, the time um, and your phone call to this program. Uh, like I mentioned, a big, huge fan of your work. And Memories available in theaters on Friday, April 29th, starring Liam Neeson on the program. Thanks for the call. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, man. You got it. That's Liam Neeson here on The Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.